All right, we're back out in the shop that is the shop. And while waiting for the mill to finish up carving this little guy, oh yes, I'm still working on that chest set. I'm not giving up. Which, by the way, brings me to another point. It sure would be nice to have two machines sitting in here in the shop. I do have room for two machines and stone from Onefinity, if you're listening to me out there. I think you missed my birthday this year back in April. So if you want to go ahead and send me a Onefinity, I'll park it right there next to this Shapoko and it will get all kinds of use. Back to this. We're going to carve this piece into the bases. There's some bad spots in this board, as you can see here and here. So we're going to be strategic about how we lay this on the machine so that it carves around those bad spots. This piece will be the back, and we're going to begin with that. Let's get on the Shapoko and let's carve this thing into something pretty. As you can see here, I still have my chest set fixture set up and the way that thing works I showed in the other video there where I gave you the tutorial is you slide your chest piece in, lock it down and continue carving. However, I don't want to take this all apart to carve this shelf. This thing is going to be a nine minute carve so rather than destroy this I've drawn a straight line across the wasteboard. I'm going to use blue tape and CA glue and we're going to set this right here and we're just going to avoid this area and we're going to carve back here. We'll bring the machine over, zero it on the corner, let it do its thing, bing, bang, boom, good to go. So as you can see, we're putting down the blue tape. Gonna put a little bit of CA glue on the piece, put a little bit of activator on there and line it up with the edge of the tape, good to go. Now I don't have my dust collection boot on there because I'm not allowed to use it, <laughs> not allowed. I can't use it with the clamping system for the chest piece and again I'm not going to wreck that whole setup to do this. So we'll cheat and we'll hold the Super Sucker 6000 right next to the bit and hopefully it'll pull in the dust. Now as you see right underneath that nozzle there, there is a knot that I'm hoping will go away just like it's going to. We won that bat, gone, cut this thing out and continue. All right, I'm with the bases. So I added two mortises here on the base. Obviously the base is gonna go out like this. I added two mortises on the back side of the base and I'll show you that on the computer on the inside now. So here are the two sides. Mortises are right here and down here and we're gonna need another half. You can't create two of the same side so use the mirror tool, mirror to the center. That gives us a left and a right. When you put it together, it'll match up perfect. Once I carve this out, I'll flip it over and carve the other side. I'm going to use the touch block here to set the zeros. You guys have seen this a thousand times. If you don't have one of those little blue handheld uh, keyboards, I recommend you get one. You can get those from the jungle store. And we're ready to rock and roll here. Cutting the mortises first. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're using an eighth inch end mill for this entire project, as we said before. What I wanted to show you here is that we are indefinitely going to be doing two different sides. This one's finished. Using a ruler so that I don't lose my zero. I don't have to re-zero. I can just flip the piece over, put the tape back in line, and put the corner of the board right where I marked it. And we'll do the other half. As you can see now, the mortises are on the other side of the board. And same shape, but in opposite configuration. Here I'm finding the center of the backer board with my new marking gauge. All right, so we have the two braces. We now have the back, and I've got the back clamped into here. This piece is just an extra support for the router. We need to put in the slot here for the mortises. These are going to be floating tenons. So I'm going to cut these long and that'll give me the flexibility to slide this back and forth along the top and square everything up and get it true. I have already got these mortises, obviously. Let's move this little guy out of the way. And what I've got is my fence set up on here so that I can drop the bit into, I hope you can see that in the camera, so that it lines up correctly with those slots. I'm going to run this on there ever so carefully back and forth. I'm going to start with the edge of the plate on the corner here. And I'm going to stop at that mark there that lines up with the front here. That'll give me a nice groove. 
We're going to go an eighth inch deep or a little less and continue dropping down until I get roughly a half an inch into the wood. And then we'll do something with the ends very, very similar. Let's give it a go. And as I said, I'll just keep going deeper and deeper until I get to a half an inch. Then I'll do the other side. Okay, so for the ends, we're going to have to get a little more tricky about this. I can't clamp them in the vise because the vise has got bars running through in the way. Solution is simple. Clamp the stock to the bench, then clamp your spacer to the stock, and you'll be able to have the support you need. Everything is rigid. Nothing's going to go anywhere. And speaking of tricky and issues, this guide with this gap here is causing an issue because each time I come to the side, it wants to do this. That's a simple fix, too. We go back to the blue tape. We'll put some blue tape on here. All the way across. Like a so. We grab a piece of wood like a so and we put some blue tape on that as well. Then it's back to the CA glue trick. One more time. Little CA glue on here, here. Spray the activator on the stick. And just like that, we now have a solid fence that will not rock when I come to the end. Let's make it happen. Okay, to make things simple, I took my one, two, three block, took these guys. Obviously, we've got these in now. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. They'll sit on there like so, each end. Put these guys, oops, put these guys like this. If I can figure out the configuration here, let's just pretend that they're on there like that. One, two, three block on each side. Gives me two inches of an overhang. Mark the corners. Got that done. Mortises are here. Line up the outside edge with the outside edge. Eyeballing the mortise here and here, here and here, because this is going to be a floating tenon again. It's going to be in there. This is not the right one, but it'll be able to move back and forth so that I can do this with the back and get it in the correct position. So now we know where that is. This is already set up. Cut the mortises make some splines, glue it together, and bing, bang, boom, you're all set. Oh, and I'm going to round the corners on this with a roundover bit so it looks like the other one. Here's a trick I use quite a bit. Get it? Router bit. We know what size the mortise is because we use this quarter-inch router bit. Let's use this to determine the thickness of the floating tenon. That now becomes the perfect feeler gauge to set your fence. Tappy tap tap left and right until it's the correct distance and then lock it down. Here I'm rounding over the corners on the edges of the braces and we're bedazzling Atlas's head with some accoutrement. What a goof. He don't know how to get out of his own way. He's too cute. Uh oh, safety inspector's coming. Before assembling this, I want to cut the T-slots in the back so they have some way to hang it. They need to go right here. Well, this setup is not going to work because, number one, the base is going to run into my clamps. So how are we going to get around this? Simple. We're going to go back to the blue tape and CA glue trick. We're going to remove these clamps. Move this out of the way. We're going to put a little tape on these pieces right here.
Then we're going to CA glue this to that, then put the clamps back in over here out of the way. We'll be able to put the key slots in. That's one of the coolest bits. Here we're doing a dry assembly to make sure everything lines up correctly. And it sure does. We're at the point where we're ready to apply finish to our project. We don't know what color we want to use. Here's a simple way to get around it. Lay them all out in a line, grab your brush, dip them into the stain, wipe a couple of lines on a scrap piece of lumber all the way across with each color. Give them a few minutes to set, wipe them off with a towel, and we'll see which one we like the best. And I think Golden Oak is the winner. These are too light for my favor. We're gonna go Golden Oak. Now that we've decided on the stain color, we can proceed with this thing. What I typically do more on a painting project than on a staining project is I'll take a handful of screws and I'll just lay them out so that once I stain or paint the back, I can set it on the screws and it doesn't stick to what I've got covering my bench. Don't know if I'm gonna to need to do that in this case because we're gonna apply the stain and then we're gonna wipe it off. I don't particularly like these foam brushes, but they work, so let's have at it here. We'll start with the back, and we'll just apply a little bit of stain here. Even strokes, nothing fancy. I'm going to wipe the excess off anyway. I've watched a lot of videos where guys dip these things in a big vat full of stain. I wish I could do that, because that, that's slick. And you don't necessarily have to do the back. I'm just being fussy about it, as I always am. So we wipe the excess here. Right there, give it a second to set. Cloth rag. Wipe off the excess. <clears throat> Perfect, it's just enough color for it. We'll let it dry and apply some poly. There you have it, everybody, the overcomplicated little shelf. Let's do the final reveal like one of them fancy cook-off shows. So what I've prepared for you today is a little decorative shelf with two coat pins. This is done in solid oak with floating tenons, which you can't see, used to overcomplicate the project. It is then lightly coated in a golden oak finish and then lathered and slathered with three to four coats of polyurethane to give it the nice sheen. A heart in the center. Please enjoy. All right, enough with the silliness. There you have it, y'all. This pretty little shelf made for a girl that my uh, wife works with. She told me I could stain it and color it any way I liked. So we did it in the golden oak, as I said in the fancy TV reveal. Um, Overcomplicated a little bit, but we are gonna put these on our website and put them up for sale. We're not gonna use the floating tenon joinery when I put them on the website, they'll be put together and more traditionally with 
brad nails and etc. some glue, but they're a nice little shelf. I encourage you to visit hinkleshop.com and see if you might want to pick one of these up. We're going to make options available with or without the heart, without the coat hooks. I can get in here with the laser possibly. At any rate, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I hope maybe you learned something. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next one.